If you never feel prepared for the holidays, I have something that is going to keep you insanely organized this year. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. I know people throw around terms like, this is the best and this will transform your life. This is the best and it hits all of your holiday pain points. We have gift tracking and budget tracking and stocking stuffer tracking and menu tracking and event planning and card tracking and activity tracking. And I know I'm forgetting something, holiday decor tracking. I have put it all inside this Notion Christmas planner. I had so much fun building it and I cannot wait to show you around. If you're new here, my name is Kaylin. I talk about all things personal growth, planning and productivity. And I also share a lot of Notion content because it is like my all time favorite tool to organize my life. And now I'm gonna help you organize your holiday season. This is the first premium template that I'm launching and I feel like I should have started with something a little bit simpler, but your girl can't do simple. Let me just get right into it and show you around. So on the home page, whenever you open a Notion template, you're gonna have to duplicate it to your own workspace. So if you don't have a free Notion account, which you can use this in a free account, you don't need a paid account to be able to use this planner. Sign up for that if you haven't already, and then click this duplicate button at the top right, and it'll help duplicate it into your account. All right, here we go. This is the home page, your Christmas command center and planning hub. This instruction box up here, you can easily just delete when you're done reading through it. So you can click the domino icon to the left and click delete. But this just gives you a link to sign up for Notion. There's also a Christmas planner guide that you can click on for more in-depth video tutorials because we're just gonna do a brief overview of everything today. And you can access that guide down here. The original link is down underneath the countdown track. Tracker. And if you have any questions about the planner at all, one of the cool things that it comes with is the Nerdy About Notion support community. I'm in there answering all sorts of questions. So if you have any trouble with this planner at all, I can help you out there. Let's scroll down to the main section where you're gonna see a navigation box on the left-hand side. These are your main planner hub pages that you are gonna see all around your workspace. So you can easily get back to those main sections. Then of course, the Christmas countdown tracker, which is just so fun. And then in the middle here, I have a notification dashboard that always tells you what date it is, how many events you have due today, tasks you have due today, any gifts that you have left to wrap, and any cards you have left left to right. And if you don't send Christmas cards, that's totally okay. I have two versions of this planner, one without Christmas card tracking and one with. So you'll be able to download whatever one you want. Over here on the right hand side are some quick button actions. This is so you don't need to go deep into the planner to find like the budget tracker or the holiday expense tracker or the gift tracker and make sure you're adding things into the right place. You can just come right to this page and quickly add a new expense, a new gift, a new stocking stuffer, a new event, or a new task right away and it will end up in the right place. I'm gonna click on Christmas years and you can see I've got three years already here for you. Now this is what makes this planner so different. You will not see this in any other Christmas planner, but this will keep track of your spending year after year after year and all the gifts you're getting for people year after year. So here on this Christmas years page, you're gonna see that it's broken down by gifts, stocking stuffers, and other holiday expenses. And then of course you have the total spent amount as well. When you click into one of those pages, you can see all the gifts that you've purchased for that year and who it is for. And here's the coolest thing. When you click on that person, you can go to their page and scroll down here and you will see a gift list. So let me open that up in a bigger page so you can actually see what it looks like. So this is showing any gifts that I've purchased for the current year, which I have not purchased these gifts. So Joseph, you can watch this video. This is for what has happened this year. The next tab is tracking gifts from all other years. So you can always come to an individual person's page, see what you bought them in the current year, and then see what you bought them in other years. But let's get back to the main hub and finish explaining the rest of this home page. Because you do have a little note section that you can put any reminders on that you want. There's a to-do list section where you can add all of your to-dos and a due date and then check it off when it's complete. And then, of course, 
How could you not have a Christmas planner without an event calendar? Because there's so many things happening these like two months of the year, November and December. So I have some example events on here just so you can see what this would look like. And you can have social events, activities, travel events, and it's all going to show up on your event calendar and also show up in other places of your planner because everything is linked. So I'll show you how that works coming up. Now let's go into each of the main navigation hubs and give you a brief overview of what is in there. So in the budget tracker, this is keeping track of all your budget categories and what you have spent so far this year and what you have left. And there's little markers that will give you a big red X if you have gone over budget, but then keep it nice and green and show you how much progress you have left to be able to get to the end of your budget. Then you have some button actions on the left hand side that allow you to easily add an expense to this holiday expense tracker, which is shown below. So this is all of this year's expenses. And then the next tab is all expenses entirely. The other cool thing that I love is this budget dashboard, which is going to show your total budget your total spent, and then give you a little message that says, yay, you're this much under budget. Or if you're not, I'll show you what the message does. So let's say we bought groceries for Christmas Eve and it was like $3,000. I know it's like who spends $3,000 on Christmas Eve, but just bear with me for the example. Then the little message says, uh oh, you're this much under budget. So I just think that's a really cool feature of the planner. Up at the top of the main pages, you will see a navigation menu. So you don't always have to go back to the main dashboard of your Christmas planner and then navigate to another main hub. It's all up here at the top. So let's explore the next one, which is the gift tracker. Now, this is where you can have all your recipients, whether they're family or whether they're a friend, colleague, teacher, they're gonna show up on this other tab. Family's gonna show up on the main tab. You also have the big red X as well. And then it's also rounding up this year's gifts. So you can see at a glance who you have bought gifts for and who you have left to buy. There's some quick button actions on the left. So if you are in here and you're like, oh yeah, I bought wrapping paper and ribbon and gift tags, you do not have to go all the way to your budget tracker and and put it in there. You can just click add a supply expense and fill out everything here. Down here, you also have another budget dashboard, but this one is just showing you how much you have spent on gifts based on your budget. It has that little message again. And then underneath that is your entire gift list. Now, what is really cool about this section is you can add a gift and then the status for the gift will update based on whether you've purchased it or if it's just an idea or you've wrapped the gift or you've given the gift. And so I could click on this coffee warmer that I had purchased, click on the little gift icon and it says, oh, I wrapped it because that meant I wrapped it. When I hit this little person icon checkbox, that means I actually gave the gift. And the other thing I wanna mention is this other need to wrap tab. So any item that you have purchased but have not wrapped yet is going to automatically be put on this tab so that when you sit down and put on the Christmas music and just have this huge wrapping party, you can go straight through this list and just check them off and they will disappear from this tab but still be recorded on the all gifts section. And then the last part of this page that I wanted to show you was a stocking tracker. So this is separate from gifts, but it's it looks very similar because it has the recipients, it has the list of stocking stuffers, and it has a budget dashboard just for stocking stuffers. And here's the really cool thing. If you buy a bag of candy or a package of fuzzy socks or anything where there's a lot of little pieces that you put in like three or four kids stockings, you can just put that in once Add the amount of recipients that I have here for magazines and it will automatically allocate how much money you spent for that person based on the cost overall. 
There's one more section on the gift tracker page and that is the Black Friday tracker. So if you are into all the sales, you could come into this section and just record what you see, what the regular price is, what the sale price is, what store it's from, and it's automatically going to calculate the percent off for you. This is just so it can keep all the sales organized so you know what you may want to buy. And down here is just showing the same information but in a different way. So this is showing by store. So if you went to just one store, if you were shopping online at one store, you could easily see what you had flagged to possibly purchase at that store. Moving on to the card tracker section. We have a few links over here that's going to give you some links to places to buy a card if you still need to look for a card. Some card message ideas. There's a calligraphy kit you can buy if you want to make your envelopes really fancy. And then we have the Christmas card expense section where you can record if you've bought the cards and the stamps just so again you don't have to go back into the budget tracker page to record those entries. And then down here under the card tracker section you're going to see three tabs, an active tab which is everyone that you are sending a Christmas card to this year, an all contacts tab which is going to have everyone in your contact list because sometimes you may not send a Christmas card to everyone in your contacts but you want to keep their address file information on hand just in case you want to send them a card in the future. And then of course any card that you have received will show up on this tab based on when you've checked this little checkbox icon section to say you've received a card from that person. And then there's also a notification dashboard here and I just I love these little dashboards everywhere. This one it gives you writing progress and mailing progress so you've written one out of two cards and then when I've written all cards it says all written. So you can keep track of how many cards you've written, sent, and also received. The menu planner section is pretty comprehensive. There's a lot going on here, but I'm going to try to make it fast because again, the more in-depth tutorials on how everything works and all the buttons is included with this planner in the instruction guide. But we have some food expenses here, just like the card tracker section. You could quickly click this button to add a food expense and then any upcoming events where you have to bring food or provide food or you're hosting and you're having this big dinner or appetizer party or whatever it is, that is going to show up on your menu planner page. So when I open one of these items, you'll see food required and it is checked. So that's an easy way to make sure that the event gets put onto this page is to check that box. So you can of course add all your recipes to this if you wanted to link a recipe to what is this Christmas Eve. Let's say we want to have cheesy garlic twists there. I can click that and it will automatically go to the cheesy garlic twist recipe. And then let's go into Christmas dinner and show you what it looks like when you add a hosting template because you can either add a regular event where food is required, so maybe an office party, cookie exchange, secret Santa exchange, etc. Or you can add a hosting event and the hosting event is where you're actually hosting because it is going to provide a brand new template for you to work on. So down here on the Christmas dinner page, we have some notes, you have a menu that you can plan. There's also tasks related to this specific event if you want to add them there and they will show up on your home page as well. So you don't have to necessarily come into this page to look at tasks specific for this event. And then there's a guest list section where you can pull people from your all contacts and invite them to be your guest here. And it's going to say how many guests you have coming to this event down at the bottom and also up here. So you can see that at a glance. You have a grocery list over here that you can fill out and then there's also a baking list so for those of you who love to do big baking days those events that require food are going to show up on this page as well just to trigger your mind as to what you want to make for those events and then you can list them out here on the left and you can see here that I have also linked to the recipe database so I can easily click and get to those recipes. And that section is very easy. There's really not too much to explain. You can just add your recipes to this section. This tab is going to pull in all of your recipes. And then based on the course that you assign it, whether it's a main dish, dessert, or side, etc., those will show up in each of those individual tabs. 
All right, we're almost through. Let's do activities and then we'll hop into holiday decor. Over here on the right, you have an activity menu section. So when it comes to things like Christmas bucket list, I try to avoid the term bucket list because it just feels like you have to cross everything off it. So an activity menu is going to give you choices and options that you can do throughout the season. So you can add as many ideas as you want to this list. Once you add a due date to it, that is going to automatically show on your event calendar. Any activity that you complete will pop over on this completed tab. And then this is the really fun part. Like I'm really excited about this section and using it myself is the holiday movie list. So you can add as many movies as you want here. And then when you want to add them to your watch list, you can just click add to watch list and it will show up under your watch list. When you're done, you can click watch and it will disappear. And then any movies that you rate five stars will show up in your favorites. And then you can reset that movie watch list for the next year so it's clear and ready to go. There's some different quick links over here that are just gonna provide some ideas for your activity menu, movie checklists if you're into watching like Hallmark movie or Up TV Christmas movies, a Christmas book section, and then if you do the Elf on the Shelf tradition, there's also information in there that will help you come up with ideas. The last section is the holiday decor section and I almost didn't put this one in here but then I had a request for it and I thought it was really fun. So any decor item that you have on your wish list that you have seen that you're wanting, you need new string lights or you want a nativity set or a new wreath or anything, you can put under this wish list item with any cost. And then once you click this icon under the little shopping basket, that is going to say you own the item and pop it under under your item inventory section, which down here, you can click the button to add an inventory item and you can say what number of quantity you have of that item and where in your house, what location that item is usually located for the Christmas season. And of course, any notes and links that you need. And then if you want to do a fun mood board, that is not a requirement, but if you do, I really like the app Mila Note and it is free up to a certain number of blocks, but to create a simple mood board, you should definitely be able to do that under the free plan. The last thing I will mention is that instruction guide again. And actually, let me take you in there just so you can see how in-depth it is. So we do have a getting starting video that will kind of go over what I've talked about today, uh, give you a general overview of what's involved here. And then we have section tutorials for each section. Now, this is where I really go in-depth explaining all the buttons, all the sections, all the things to be aware of, how the template is structured and how it works. So it's good to know information to go look at that, but you also have those little instruction toggles throughout the planner that are going to help you as well in case you forget. And then when you transition to a new year, there's just a few steps here that you need to take, including how to update that countdown widget on the main dashboard and add a new year to Christmas years. If you have your own task database and own recipe database that you want to use and you don't want two different databases, this is going to give you instructions on how to connect that to the planner. And then we have some frequently asked questions like, how can you delete all the template examples? So that's something like I have combined all on one page that shows you an easy way to do that because I do think it's helpful to download the template and see the examples and see what it looks like filled out so you know where things are supposed to go. Oh, the last thing that I will mention is any updates that are made to the planner you get for free. Now it's a little funky the way we have to do this because you don't necessarily want to download a whole new planner if I've made updates to it. So there is a link here that will take you to a page where I list those updates as well as instructions if you want to apply them to your own planner. So I don't foresee there being too much there, but if there is a new feature that Notion comes out with and I wanna show you how you can integrate that into your planner to make it a lot better and easier to use, I will add it to that page. If you can't tell, I am just so excited to get this template into your hands. So I will leave a link below for you to grab that if you think it would be helpful and also ease and organize your holiday season. That's what I am all about. That's what I wanna help you do is just stay organized through the chaos and the hecticness that this time of year often brings. And if you like this template and you wanna see more templates from me, 
let me know because these are like the templates that I'm going to come out with that are premium templates. They are not just one to two pages and that's it. As you can see, they're extremely comprehensive. A lot of work goes into them and I can't wait to build something that maybe you've been looking for and haven't been able to figure out or do yourself. So let me know in the comments if there is any other template ideas that you have and I will get to work on those. Thanks so much for watching and I hope you have an organized holiday season.